Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our third day of our special GIS virtual meeting uh, this year. I'm so glad to have you with us all today. Today is a very special day for us because we're going to uh, 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 target the most important team in the cath lab, which is nurses and technicians. They are so special to us in GIS uh, education. We work hardly with our partner, Medtronic, uh, to join them in their back workshop, which is uh, uh, definitely something designed for you. It's a unique idea. Uh, Mohammed Jaha is a great person, had uh, uh, innovated a lot of great ideas, and we came up with, today with, the, with something uh, never have been done that we're going to demonstrate to you live from SMC Cath Lab with a great team, great moderator, uh, everything you need to know uh, as a G junior and even as a senior in the Cath Lab, and we'll go uh, over it step by step. I'll not take your time. I really uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Stay tuned with, with us in all our activity in GIS, and we promise you to keep uh, uh, everything up to your standard. Uh, from this, we'll hand the mic to our moderator, Maher and Faisal. I, I wish you all the best. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mohammed, for the great idea. As Dr. Uh, Dr. Fawaz said, it's the first time we do that live from the cath lab, which is a great idea to share the experience of the expert people uh, in SMC and Riyadh uh, to everybody. Uh, it's a, it was a very hard uh, work from the guys to, to, to prepare these things, and it, I think it's a very special thing. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Mr. Faisal. Cath Lab Supervisor uh, at Jeddah. Uh, my name, Maher uh, Zaki. I'm uh, also Cath Lab Manager Operation uh, Manager in uh, Abu Dhabi. Uh, we have our speakers also uh, over there in SMC. We have uh, Jihad. He's a Cath Lab Manager uh, at Riyadh uh, King Saudi Arabia. And we have also Mohammed Jaha, Senior Market Development Training and Education Specialist uh, at Metronic. Uh, we have Sari also is a clinical resource uh, nurse, uh, nurse uh, at King Abdulaziz Medical City also. Uh, we're looking forward to see uh, uh, something unique, uh, Jaha. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, alaikum guys. Uh, thank you for joining. Welcome to Specialized Medical Center here in Riyadh. I'm surrounded with friends from SMC and from National Guard. So we're gonna do a couple of things on demonstration. So at the beginning, uh, everyone knows Sarah Abed from National Guard Hospital, Clinical Research Nurse. Let me introduce to you Jihad Manna, Cath Lab Manager at SMC. He will introduce the team and take us for a bit around the Cath Lab uh, to show, uh, talk about, then we're gonna step to our live demonstration, inshallah. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, all. This is Jihad Mohanna, Cath Lab, SMC Hospital, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So, of course, this is the Cath Lab procedure room. As you know, the Cath Lab should have some equipments and materials. Let me start with the, the equipment. We have already Cath Lab machine, X-ray machine, CRM and table. And we have also injector. It's important for the procedures and intraortic balloon, bump, and of course the important thing it's a car, emergency trolley. Okay, and uh, this is the uh, quick review. And we have material, Mr. Rothman, if you please. We have already the catheters. Can we bring one? Come on, catheter, just one. Yes, just. I want thank you. لا خلاص أنا قصدي ذا المشي كله. وتعال من هالجهة خليهم يشوفوا. Okay, this is the sum of materials like sure catheters, stents, balloons, and we will shall review and going when, the, when we are prepare the uh, table. Okay, our staff we are here, Mr. Abdullah as a volunteer patient for the <laughs> preparing, and we also we have uh, Mr. Osman, he will be open the materials, and uh, Mr. Ghayath, X-ray, our table, inshallah, X-ray technician. And of course, Mr. Amjad, uh, scrub nurse here. 
Uh, okay, let me start. Uh, okay, Mr. Jack, can we open the material, Uthman, please? So, uh, Maher uh, Faisal, uh, we're going to do now the demonstration. Uh, please, uh, you guys got the chat room. I cannot see anything in the chat room right now. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. We are going to do now. We are going to prepare the patient. So, what is it? So we are going to prepare the patient for the procedure, preparing the table, right? Good. Good. Uh, reverse. Okay, take the towel, Shabab. Yes. I'm just going to face the cameras. So this is only for demonstration reason that we are facing the change of the camera. So you. Yep. Sorry. So, what's going on now is uh, I'm just here. Well, as you can see, they are preparing the equipment for the physicians from gowning to the gloving. And uh, we have the tray, which is going to be femoral and radial one. We have the manifold. So, it depends on your technique. Uh, whether you are using the manifold or the injector. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, uh, up to the cath lab, whatever equipment they have. Uh, we have our uh, saline balls, definitely, and we have the contrast one. Uh, we have the big ball in case we need to uh, put our saline for flushing of the catheters and uh, wiping the wire. Uh, depends on what uh, type of uh, uh, material you're going to use to drape or to uh, as antiseptic. Uh, some of the hospitals they have chlorpep, some of the hospitals they use the povidone. So again, this is all based on the cath lab preferences, uh, a new hospital. But now with JCI, what are we seeing more? The use of chlorpep or iodine? Uh, uh, there is a lot in the market. Uh, they have chloroxidine and they have what they call a duraprep sometimes and the povidone. So you can see actually there's a variety of uh, uh, antiseptic uh, solution that can be used uh, in the cath lab. Uh, for example, if you talk about the cath lab, we have a chloroxidine one. So uh, the guys are using chloroxidine sponge to, to drape. Okay. Uh, as I understand, we're going to go for the radial one, right? So as a preparation. Now, the very key point that Amjad is doing now, if you can see his hand. What he's have doing now, he's labeling each item, and it's uh, it's nice to have a color-coded cath pack. And remember now, in the cath lab, majority of the time, it should be all disposable. We should not catch a reusable item. It should be, it's a no practice. One of the things I would really recommend, whenever you have the outside draping, you should have a double drape. It's also helpful for a surgical procedure. Uh, as you can see, uh, he's taking the labels, okay, so maybe you can show them just the labels for a little bit. Yeah. So it contains all the labels, including the drugs, he's going to use it on the table, for example, labeling all the, the small balls or the big balls and the syringes as well. So this is, should be uh, ABC of our trolley preparation, definitely. Okay, you can carry on. Okay, this is about the table. Let me start with the patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, so patient preparation now. So uh, we gonna go for radial preparation first. Connect. So uh, our technologist is gonna connect the patient to the ECG. ECG so ECG is the uh, Faisal. Uh, for ECG, uh, is Faisal with us or gone? Yeah, ten million. Is this connected or is available? Okay. So just with nothing, we'll talk about ECG. Remember that ECG preparation on a patient, on the cath table, is different. We're not using the chest lead anymore. What we are using is we are putting the, 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 the two leads on the top of the arm. You have to make sure that your chest is clear. So it needs a bit of practice. I've been trying this with a couple of hospitals. And make sure all of your cable is in a way that it doesn't get tangled or hanged for our radiographer will be moving the table the cameras and all of these things. Okay, also, this is ECG and there is cuff, blood pressure and blood saturation already connected. Okay, it's all here in the, as you see in the screen, the hemodynamic here. Okay, ECG and blood pressure and also saturation. And always remember when you're uh, connecting your ECG and hemodynamic, make sure that you're always zeroing using your fresh item 
And if there is any slight of uh, discrepancy in your leads or anything, double check it before you do procedure. Uh, do your procedure. One important point, uh, Jihad, if you're doing like a an interior uh, PCI LAD, and we always say this uh, during ECG, what kind of lead we are looking for? And of course, we're looking for lead one, two, three, okay. because it's anterior. And then what? What? Uh, yes. Just I want to uh, yani focusing for the uh, something. It's important prior to start the, any procedure in the cath lab or OR. It's time out. Time out. That means we looking for the identification for the patient. We used to identification here. Of course, the MRN and his name. And we always ask the patient, what's your name? We cannot ask him, are you Muhammad? It's not uh, correct ID. Okay? So after uh, connecting the patient to the hemodynamic, we start to prepare the arm. Of course, in the cath lab, as always, if, as usual, it's, we use both groin, both axis, radial axis and femoral axis. Okay, so Mr. Sari, can we talk about that? Okay, so it depends on your technology or the equipment that you have it in order to prepare for the radio. This is very important, guys. That know a diamond I've been seeing in cath labs all over the regions, they have different type of boards. So this so, is, yeah, yeah so as you can see, this is uh, it's gonna be supported by the uh, under the shoulder of the patient. Okay. So what we do usually, we can bring a roll balls just to support under the arm, unless you want to actually push this one up, so, and we can cover a uh, very good compliant patient, mashallah. Yes, mashallah, he's very good. Okay, you can support it by a tape or any, if you have strap, you can strap the hand just to give it uh, more support. Okay, so he doesn't move his hand during the procedure. And the other one is the plastic part for the physician or the operator, so they're gonna put it under the patient's body, which is gonna give him more uh, area or more support to both the catheter and the uh, Jihad, a question for you. Do you give any sedations uh, to the patients in your cat lab, pre-procedure or anything, or no? Actually, that's right. We give the patient uh, some, uh, yeah, I mean, medication okay. to uh, keep him calm, but it depends on the doctor order. IV so or uh, we give it him uh, order, but uh, yeah, by order, right. IV, yeah. but better to wait the doctor to start. So prior to the injection. Mm -hmm. But now uh, during the preparation, there is nothing, except if there is any needs to uh -huh. for this. For Maher, her. any question from you, said you're on silent. Maher, you're on silent. So what usually, guys, you are giving the patients to, to relax him during the procedure? Actually, we give him fentanyl. Fentanyl and midazolam. But we start with one milligram midazolam, 25 fentanyl. Okay, and the, is it the cardiologist who can give the fentanyl here? Yes. The policy? Yes. The cardiologist has a conscious sedation procedure suggestion course. Okay. So certified cardiologist. Very good. Interventional cardiologist. And this is important. There's a lot of centers that doesn't allow this. They always request for that, especially for the high control drugs or narcotics like fentanyl to have the course. In the old days, we used to give Valium and Pyrotron in the cath lab as a pre-med, but this is stopped for a long time now. And the deepest sedation that you can give the patient uh, really is talking to him. Proper uh, communication, proper explanation for the case. And you need them quite conscious. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so uh, here the, the cath lab actually they have, uh, they are more specialized and more advanced. So they have the star board, which is, can be used actually for the Inshallah arm support, Inshallah. which is very good. So uh, this will be put under the shoulder, right? And we're gonna protect the starboard with the paper tissues or whatever you have to use it. I will ask the patient just to grip the, uh, the arm and then we can extend it, which is very helpful, okay? Mm -hmm. You can see it's very easy and very straightforward preparation. And then you can put the uh, classic support or the stand support for the physician. This is uh, mobilized, so you can just actually bring it uh, closer to the patient, mm -hmm. wait a little bit. Maybe when you finish the rate, you can push it a little bit in, and then it's gonna be easy. And it's almost aligned actually with the plastic part and the, uh, uh, the starboard. Okay. That's right, yes. 
شال وي كونتينيو دريبينغ اور بيشنت ترى نسيسو كنا فونكشن يعني يلا كان وي يلا سو ات ديبيندس اون ذا تكنيك يوزولي اند ذا بريفرنسز اوف ذا كاتلاب سم اوف ذيم ذي مايت جو اهيد اند بريف ذا بوث جروينز اند ذا راديال بس جاست فور ذا بريزنت Purposes, we're going to go for the radio so far. Actually, I've seen this uh, more and more, especially in private, uh, in female television. The doctors who are highly skilled, they're just going for one uh, preparation, which is not ideally for me. Maher, any question from the audience? And that None so far. None so far. So the, the interesting thing, he's using chloroprep uh, for it. This has, a, and it's, yeah, as you can see, it's orange. But there's two types usually when they're selling it or getting it. There's something which is, does not have, uh, doesn't have color, and some of them is clear. I really like the colored one, especially if we have a pacemaker procedure, because it really marks your area. Yes, so we have colorless and color. Yeah. But better to use color to know where is the real area That's so, like sometimes the, some of the people they said if you use color it, it's gonna stick on the skin yes and they think it's allergy <laughs> reaction to the <laughs> antiseptic you use it yes. but which is not actually they might miss uh, the, color. The, the color uh, yes okay. so draping yes please so the drape consists always yani, four holes two for radials right and left radials and two for femoral right and left femoral So and there is the picture for where is the head. It's easy to use. Again, yes. Shufu, if you don't have the radial uh, the radial one, you could use the right okay. groin for the radial left groin for the right other. That if you don't have it. <laughs> so important thing is you remember you minimize your touching and your sterile area. Secondary nurse, Allah Sari. Yeah, very good. Okay, so try to maintain sterility as much as you can without touching the right wheel. It's very, it's always uh, initial to speak to the patient and to communicate with him. So how are you, Mr. Abdullah? Oh, excellent. So we need just to protect always the... Yes, we need to protect the phone. Okay. So we get on on the uh, preparation for the sterile drape and the sterile uh, field. So, uh, yes, we have all the sharps, the body cane, the blade, the needle, the, the sheath. Okay, I'm not going to open a sheaf because I don't have a, 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 anything uh, expired or anything. So I'm not going to waste resources. <laughs> so remember uh, when you're preparing your needles and things, and uh, Anjad is showing a very good thing that he's showing a self practice. When you putting a gauze on the needle, it clearly shows the sharp edge. Now, ideally, each table has to have a sharp box, but unfortunately, here I don't see it. Amjad, what do you want to do if you don't have a sharp box? Actually, we have this sponge for cleaning the copper line. We can use it as a sponge. Okay, good. Okay. 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 People can hear you, so I'll repeat what you're saying. So Amjad is saying that he can, it doesn't have a sharp box, so he's using these sponges. So this is going to be very helpful for us, Jen. Worst case scenario okay. and example. Yeah. Sir Amjad, if you please, let me start to prepare the manifold and the lines. Yeah, fine. So while, okay. while we are preparing, uh, let's, let's, uh, uh, we have one question, guys. Uh, what is your special precaution during the COVID-19 over there in the cath lab during the procedure? Thank you for these questions. Actually, we have uh, some precautions. So every emergency cases, as you know, the elective cases should be screened already for the COVID-19, okay? But for the emergency cases, 
we have also the we take all the precautions as uh, the patient is covid okay so we have also يعني, regard this uh, plus of the mask regular mask and this is the face protection one of the okay and also the gowns for the circulating scrub gowns and gloves and all everything and for the of course the scrub team doctors and scrubbing nurses it should be all, everything uh, screened so, so we treat all, so we treat all the emergency cases as a positive cases we have we were all the full pbes actually yes yes we treat him uh, as a uh, regular and this now, is what we should do actually yes yes so of course we have also the hiba filter here in the room for the okay. uh, like these uh, cases very good so for uh, actually the procedures can be done by manual manifold as a sterile or the injector so we have the injector because the handle we can manage the fluid by handle or manifold look we start to prepare the uh, manual way so uh, our uh, back has uh, manifold three out three out three ports three ports so the first one is going to be for contrast, right? The second one for flushing, the third one for pressures. Yes. Okay, so we have two yeah. ends, the proximal and the distal end. The proximal one is for the syringes to give contrast or to flush. And the distal end is for the, uh, to be connected with the catheters uh, when we start to inject. So in big centers, or a lot of the big centers that has a big number of cases, they're using and really the, the standard, the gold standard now is becoming the auto-injector what they have. Um, but manifold is really important to learn how to use it. Now, as you can see, the guys, sterile technique in handling. Jihad is connecting it to the uh, line one, which is your arterial line. Uh, line two, as we said, is going to be for the normal saline flush. And line three is for the contrast. Now, important things to keep in mind, all this tightening your loosen ends, all of your connection, have the control uh, for the stopcock for it near the scrubber. And uh, this is really important and key point because it's becoming a lost art how to use the level. The, the chest level being done or not yet? The chest level? Yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. CVT, we are missing you. <laughs> yes, the, the chest level is equal to the, uh, to the transducer. Yeah, hello. So always have to maintain the phlebostatic axis when we need to uh, set up our transducer, definitely. This is the ABC basics of the hemodynamic. Jessel, what usually the troubleshooting that you usually face when you're having uh, connecting your uh, transducer? Or, uh... Well, sometimes you know the you know if it's not flash well, uh, they have to reflash it again, especially you know if there's any air bubble. Uh, uh, sometimes you know if there is you know the, during the flushing uh, if there is any water leaking uh, to the transducer it will not give you a good reading okay. what about the ecg uh, also because i missed you in the during the ecg connection we're trying to ask about what kind of stuff that you face with troubleshooting or uh, your ecg leads uh, you know ecg lead your uh, position is the most important as you know and you know sometimes we need to shave uh for i mean the electrodes to be you know placed well uh and uh, the ecg it has to be around the table the cable mm -hmm. so it will not affect the x-ray uh during the uh angio. very good but you want to continue the manifold sorry i had to take break. go ahead to the yes. manifold so now when we need to inject so we should fill we should fill the of course the syringe make it up the uh, contrast down mr amjad please no yes up and fill the syringe please so this is contrast and after filling the syringe we should remove all the bubbles no 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 this is maximum yes thank you mr amjad yes be sure there is no bubble in the system mr sorry okay um, I would like actually to hear also uh, Mr. Oh, Fasa and Mr. Maha from yes, the audience, down, down. which one they do yes. prefer to use or what's their actually references in their catalog. They can just write it down and post it for us. Well, so I would like to know what they prefer. Actually, I was about to discuss this one with you. Uh, 
uh, you guys uh, using the money for the manual one and you're using the injectors. So um, from your experience, what is your preference away from it? It's not cost effective to go for the injector. We know that. Uh, mm. but as an end user, as nurses, technicians, what you prefer? For me, I prefer the injector. It's easier for me. It's just prepare it and it goes easily. And, and uh, it minimizes the, the air puppets and very safe to use it. Uh, while, while the injectors, it has, it has a human error sometimes. But from your experience, guys, uh, what, what you prefer, what you advise us to use, the injector or the, the manifold? If you are talking about cost-effective issues, definitely the manifold is going to be uh, better. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about uh, controlling more the contrast use, yes, you can control by the injector how many mils. So you control by mil, so which is actually more safer for the patient in order to use it. Um, the air bubble also is more controlled um, by experience, so we can actually uh, try to minimize the air bubbles uh, as long as we make sure that the connections are right. The machine, they have sensors to detect for the air bubbles as well. So all the safety measures are included when we talk about the injector and using the contrast. So safety measures, I think, with the injector are more than uh, when we go for the manifold, uh, manual mode. There's a question I need to ask. A while ago, when uh, Fahd Onazi uh, from National Guard Hospital. He was a speaker during uh, the hemodynamic uh, webinar that we had with the PAC. You remember, I believe you in National Guard, they were doing a study about the auto injector with right heart study, that there is an error in the measurement of the right heart study. Faisal, you're using injectors, I think, in uh, King uh, Faisal. Yes, yes. So, uh, is there an error or something? Sorry, Mohammed. Do you face any issue with it? Uh, any error or any? No, no. no. I, 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 I ex we experienced this one with the ACES. I mean, we are using ACES in our hospital. So uh, the ACES can actually give you a lower pressure uh, than the invasive one when you use the manifold or the transducer one, let's say, um, to be more accurate. Uh, yes, it can be lower a little bit. Uh, that's why it's more recommended if you're going to go for like right heart study, okay, if, you're, if you are going, for example, like uh, mitral commissurotomy procedures, which is you really need more accurate invasive pressures, it's better to, to use the transducer rather than the uh, assist machine uh, or with the injector machine. Uh, this is my experience so far, so I don't know uh, Personal principles you had or... Uh, actually, we prefer the injector. It's, you know, as you said, it's more uh, controllable and we can lose the mil by mil, you know, okay. for every patient. Uh, so about the hemodynamic, no. You have no issues no, about Even Prince Sultan no. Kardec, I know for a fact that they're using actually the same injector. And they have it, and especially in pediatric congenital cases, they didn't have an issue. At the beginning, when they started using it, it's something to consider. So one small comment I wanted to ask. Your saline uh, flush, is it usually hepronized or non-hepronized? What's your practice in the lab for your flu? So our practice, yes, it's hepronized, okay? All of this, uh, so and you know, also regardless, with the injector or without, you know, manually or no. Hebronized saline, yes. I can see you have like 2,500 units in 500 mils. Of saline. Yes, right. but not for all. For the transducer, we use less, 1,000. One and okay. So if it's like 500, you put 500 units. If it's one liter, you put 1,000 units. It's like one mil per one, one unit, one. right? I mean, for the flushing for the transducer, 1,000 to bear 500. Okay. But for the uh, for flushing, for the and flushing the, yes. yes. Exactly. That's very good. So now, next step of our preparation, let's say we like <laughs> uh, what we would like to demonstrate a bit is preparation for a balloon or a stand on the table. So we're going to open an inflation device now, and we're going to open some uh, balloon stand and, a guy, and even a catheter that we have. Uh, we would like to hear also, uh, Mr. Mahram, Mr. Faisal from the audience, what's their preferences to dilute actually the saline for transduce or even for flushing? Do they have uh, different... Uh, uh, preferences. Now we have, like, for example, in one liter we put 5,000, in 500 we put 2,500. What's their preferences? What's their technique or the, the percentage the of heparin? Yes. No, I think I think it's a standard almost everywhere. We use the same. Okay. So we're going to open a. Yeah. Hmm? Faisal are using the same dilution, yes. right? Yes. 
almost the same. So uh, when we're talking about medication and heparin, uh, what is your cocktail giving in the, in the radial once once you insert the sheets? John? Oh, yeah. Yes. What's your, how's the page? Is it okay? Yeah. The page is okay? Oh, uh, yes. Right. <laughs> yes, Mr. Abdullah, it's, we're talking with him. He's, uh, alhamdulillah, hemodynamically and physically. Right. Just before we start this, uh, there, uh, there's a question from the audience about your cocktail. Yes. Okay. On the so, radio. Yes. Usually, most of the doctors use the, after inserting the sheath in the artery, radial especially, radial axis or ulnar, of course, we use cocktail. We call it the cocktail. The cocktail is consists of two medications, verabamine and nitrate. Okay. So, 200 mic, 200 mic. Okay, and the heparin is where? And the heparin, of course, is by uh, separately IV. That's we the give him IV, 3,000, some doctors 5,000. Okay, so this is the practice. So of the that's, uh, this is the cocktail. Some of doctors would, during the, for the inferior, inferior MI, we, they don't uh, need to put the nitrate with the cocktail. So we give just verbamine and heparin, of course, alone. Okay. So, so this is our, our cocktail. If you have another uh, cocktail, uh, maybe better to... Do you have any different experience? So uh, far, uh, yeah, some of them, they use only Verapamil, some of them, they combine both actually Verapamil and nitroglycerin. And we have to mention always that the patient's condition, the heart rate, the blood pressure of the patient will control how much can be given or even not to give at all. So you have to be careful about this one, especially with acute MI cases. Uh, they might actually omit some of the uh, cocktail uh, drugs to be given for the patients. Yes. Yeah. Depending right. on the availability, uh, I've seen places that they don't have Vapamil and they've been using nitro alone, or actually the opposite in some countries. So it differs from uh, country, country practice to practice. So, yeah. And the question, uh, what about you, Maher? Yeah, just, just, there was a, uh, I have a comment in why, why you are trying to avoid nitroglycerin in the inferior, just to explain for the audience. And for the verapamil, we are giving only verapamil. We start, we stop using uh, nitroglycerin uh, in, in, the, in the heart center where we practice, uh, 2.5 milligram. Uh, but to go back to the inferior, inferior my usually inferior my uh, they got uh, bradycardia, and if you are giving nitroglycerin, that will will affect that. Is this what you mean? Yes. It's because yeah. of the body cardio, mainly, or the reason for the inferior? Yes, I think yes. Okay. okay. But not all, not all the doctors. Some doctors, they, they don't care any about the inferior or anterior. They give the nitroglycerin because we give him just you know, a small dose. Yeah, but yeah. Well, you know, now, now what we see from our experience that it's not, it's not necessary or unnecessary to give the nitroglycerin. Verapamil 2.5 was enough. For the mm -hmm. last, let's say, uh, four or five years, we're using that. Uh, nitroglycerin you give during the procedure if necessary, if you need it. But yes. my preference, it's an operator preference, of course. Very that's good. right, that's right. So, we're going to prepare our uh, inflation device in the inflator right now. So, in the inflators, they come in different brands, different companies. So, we can open this directly. Key point, uh, points when you buy a good inflator, you have to remember it need to really take good high pressure, good amount of fluid, and depending on your procedure, coronary versus vascular. So what you, uh, this is where you want to care of the amount of fluid. Can we raise the table up for our uh, tall scrub nurse? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Okay. So as you can see, what's the mixture of the standard mixer for you guys here in the hospital for your uh, nitro versus uh, Yes. Uh, sorry, uh, your contrast versus uh, saline, right? <laughs> yes. So actually, we use 50-50. Uh, we use uh, f uh, normal saline and uh, contrast media. So we put 50-50 concentration, sometimes uh, third to third, but 50-50 maybe. For yani coronary balloons, yes, and stent, yes, 50-50. Yes, so, as yeah, uh, for default, yani by default, yes. Personally? So almost yani, between uh, 12 to 14 cc mm. in the syringe in the inject and in the gun inflation device so as you can see what he's trying to do de-airing here this is one technique of de-airing and I'm an, I'm an older guy so i use an older technique 
the thing is uh, sometimes they recommend if you're using bigger balloon like a three uh, three or three five uh, balloon in a sense mm -hmm. try to dilute it a bit more don't go 50 50. some doctors would prefer that i agree so, agree especially long long uh, balloons long, long stems long, they need more time if 50 50 it's to deflate it's so better to make so, it more dilution like when you're doing pci now uh, what else uh, yeah. Uh, do you have uh, an extension for the uh, for the connection of the Y connector? Mm -hmm. What is it? Is it ah, okay. So usually, when you're doing PCI, I uh, can open the wiring. You would have a long extension to uh, connect. You want a good distance between the doctors and the scrub nurse, so it'd be safer. Usually, you would have a Y connector similar as this, either. Uh, y connector with an O-ring or something push and pull, depending on the brand or whatever, depending also on the doctor's preference. So it's always remember this is key that you don't have any leakage. It, you should have, it should have something uh, and it should be uh, adequate to take your proper size of stent and balloon or equipment. Always, regardless of the brands, guys, check your numbers, check your equipment numbers. Good. So, yeah. shall we prepare, how, show them how to prepare a balloon? Asman, you have a balloon and stand. Can you start with the balloon? Jad, you could. Uh... So, uh, definitely, as we know, we have different types of balloons. Uh, we have the compliant and non compliant ones. So, uh, different range, different sizes. So, this is, will be depending on the uh, preference of the cath lab and what you are doing as a procedure wise. Uh, the balloon, the semi-compliant balloon or the normal balloon usually will go for pre-dilatation one and the non-compliant one for the post-dilatation one. So I guess this, fish, this balloon is non-compliant one. Uh, so uh, we are doing the meniscus now just actually to minimize the air available uh, between the connections itself. Okay, so we take the balloon out from the basin and we try to uh, prime the balloon from the tip so it depends usually what you are doing you're priming from the tip you try to make sure there's no uh, air and the, the the drop is coming out uh, by a needle or uh, some of the uh, technique can be used by syringe without uh, yes. damaging the uh, yes. balloon itself so syringe without please without needle try okay i mean without needle there you are. So try to flush the balloon, just insert it, yes, and look for the drops, it will be out from the side. You can show them the drops is coming out. Okay, yes. excellent. So excellent. this is just to make sure the patency of the wire is coming out from the balloon tip to the side port, okay? And this type of balloon we call it monorail, right? So the monorail, when it, the, the, the tip of the, uh, or the wire is coming out from the side port of the uh, balloon itself. Very good. And there's actually over the uh, wire balloon, okay. which is going to take the whole length of the balloon shaft when you want to use the wire. And definitely the technique or the wire, uh, the length of the wire should be taken uh, in a precaution way because you need to measure the length of the balloon shaft. So here we have a monorail balloon. So we flush it already. It's in. Uh, we're going to negative now before we go for the uh, insertion of the balloon. Have you done the negative technique? Negative. So, uh, depends on what you are using. Sometimes they are using the syringes by uh, uh, sure. negative, I'm, I'm like two or three times, or uh, indicator immediately. We're old men. So, old men. <laughs> we are old style. So, in the old days, they used to tell us negative with the syringe three times, then you connect with the uh, manifold uh, deflator and you negative that. Can you do that for us? Hello? Well, you have to use a good big syringe. Don't use a 10 cc, either a 20 cc or a 30. 20, yes, better. Okay, so directly from the balloon, and sometimes they just connect it to the three way, they do negative, and they close it to the system, which is to make sure more that the negative port is. Uh, uh, the negativity of the balloon, or the profile of the balloon is the uh, the lowest one from the side port. Uh, we can connect it here. Okay, we connect the manifold. Uh, the yes. Indicator, sorry. Yes. Yeah. You close to the indicator. Yeah. Okay. So negative from the syringe now. 
like two times and you close to the syringe after negative. Now push it to the push it, push it, push it to the gun, yes. Close. Close to the gun, close to the gun, yes, like this. So negative the syringe, the balloon. Okay. Yes, like this. Okay. And you try to prime again the indicator just to make sure there is no air bubble uh, in the connections. Yes. Okay. So our balloon now is ready so uh, to go, right? So uh, whenever we need to proceed, the physician is ready. So we go with the wire and they uh, go with the balloon over the wire, the coronary wire. So next step is going to be the stent, huh? Next step is your stent. So you flush the stent, uh, balloon, huh? Oh, very good. Yeah, let's see the stent, what's going to happen. So important uh, questions that I would like to ask you, Sadiq. Um, hydrophilic versus non-hydrophilic, a bit say a while, I don't think. What's the preferences now with the physicians when doing it? Uh, depends on your actually technique uh, and what's the lesion that you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. So always we have to, always we have to, uh, we have our uh, workhouse wires. Okay. So it depends. We have sometimes uh, BMW, sometimes they use uh, Sion Blue, sometimes they use floppy wire mm -hmm. as uh, basics for the PCIs. Yeah. Whenever you deal with another lesions like CTO lesions, so we go for uh, further sometimes uh, stiffer wires and the hydrophilic wires. Uh, it depends on your hospital uh, and your cat lab, what do you have type of wire usually? So uh, all depending on what you are dealing with. Yes. Okay. So, but always we have to be ready for all the scenarios. Whatever we have in the cat lab, we should be ready for all the scenarios. Uh, I think Jihad, he showed us some of the uh, cabinets. Where yeah. do we have the catheters? Where do we have the wires and the balloon and the stent? Yeah. Uh, we can get a look uh, later on in case yes, just to show course. them what type of wires we have. Yes. Please, uh, Mr. Rahman, or let me help you. So, so actually, this uh, cabinet we have uh, this uh, very good cabinet. So we have here shelves so we put the wires and we can see the wires before we open the uh, the shelf okay so this is the wires and for catheters another shape so the same we can see the all the types of catheters from here so this is uh, we can separate it for the guiding catheters of course the diagnostic catheters the same in the same way okay but for the stents and balloons it's like the of course shelves we have here shelves and our stents and balloons we can separate it and we can put it uh, regarding the expiry dates we can see everything okay and this is very good what you're showing that uh, the, a good example that you're putting it on the side not over each other if you put it over each other and you try to grab the lower one uh, it will fall down i've seen this and a lot of people doing it which i really we really don't recommend keep it on the side put it according to the according to your length and expiry date and when you have a near expiry date stickers dot markers it's very very important to add it to the yeah. shelving yes uh, and i think this you know, as because the doctors will be here and he can already see the what see we have yeah. and the scra the runner okay. and this is very important when you're organizing your cabinet that you have the things that you need fast during the procedure closer to you like the catheters guiding you don't need it except at the beginning or in the middle and it's for a few seconds but the stent balloon is something more active Question, other question. What about your emergency equipment? What about your temporary pacemaker? Your, um, what you call it, uh, pericardial DCSS? Yes. Yes. Yes, of course we have, Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. We have already pericardial synthesis kit and pacemaker wires. And as we see here, it's always near the runner and near the patient. Okay. Immediately we can open okay. all what, the. What's the size of the. Catheter you have there uh, with the pericardial synthesis. Mm -hmm. So this is six French, yes. Okay, okay so we have six French. Some of the uh, mm -hmm. hospital they have eight point three French. So it depends on what's your uh, preferences in the okay. yes. so you uh, the is the cabinet. Yes, make a wire bipolar wire. Okay.
So guys, talking about the emergency and emergency uh, things during the procedures, we're talking about pericardiosynthesis. So what other things you're advising all the nurses, technicians to have in the cath lab, which is mandatory or uh, during emergency, you need to have it. And what you are advising us to have? I think beside the, uh, what uh, Mr. Jihad explained about the pericardial synthesis center for your spacing wires, uh, you have to have your uh, balloon pump machine, and we have one balloon pump machine around the cath lab. Uh, I think Mr. Jihad was trying to show us also what they have as an anesthesia equipment for the anesthesia team. So they have their ventilators and they have their own uh, card for medications, intubation set. Beside the emergency trolley, which is available, and the defibrillator, definitely which is very uh, important. What do you think about the graphs, the coronary graph? Very good. Some of the drugs that you should actually have it in the cath lab, uh, the one that you can be used for the noriflu phenomena, for example. So uh, whatever your preferences from adenosine to verapamil to nitro to nitroprocyte, so uh, depends on your physician preferences, but this is always what we should have in the cath lab. Uh, uh, a, a, a huge dissection. So I, I believe graft stents will save our life, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, the graft stent, I think it's very important for the emergency situation like perforation. It's helped us many, many, many times. So now from my experience, and I, 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 I would like to say that all the cath lab, they should have a graft stent different sizes in the cath lab. Yes, exactly. type, type three perforation. You cannot you cannot uh, solve it with long inflation or with any uh, uh, revising the heparin. You need to have a graft stent, so it's a mandatory really to have it in the cath lab. Since we're talking about medication, I was about to do it at the end, but something interesting just now. I just received a text message from one of the audience, which is Dr. Abdullah Shahab, senior, the senior consultant. Professor of Cardiology, and he was talking about, we were talking about the Vrapamil. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's a published article by Dr. Abdullah, 2.5 milligram Vrapamil was uh, the experience, and he sent me a voice note. Yeah, I'd like to thank you. Uh, GIS on the effort you guys uh, providing uh, step by step, you know, um, uh, uh, practical tips for our stuff. With regard to intra-arterial um, uh, cocktail, uh, we have our experience and published in Heart Views uh, a few months ago. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, around 300 patients uh, consecutive coming with different uh, uh, background and presentations, non STEMI, STEMI and um, stable angina, um, uh, equal uh, gender and uh, so we've uh, looked at a different cocktail. We looked at the uh, verapamil alone, verapamil and nitroglycerin, and nitroglycerin alone. And, uh, the, you know, the whole idea is really to prevent a spasm, which is very common. Up to 20% they get a spasm, which is really, you know, stop our uh, work and uh, using the, the best uh, access, which is radial for our patient, our staff, and everyone actually, and the patient himself or herself. Uh, so we found that uh, verapamil uh, has done a great job. Uh, this is uh, without affecting the blood pressure mm -hmm. so much, and getting the um, uh, great uh, anti-spasmatic um, uh, 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 results. And, um, and it's published in our views. You can see that. So we, our our, our uh, routine being verapamil uh, since then. And uh, the, the details of that uh, you can find in hard views and um, great job. Uh, just wanted to share that with you. Thank you very much. It's really amazing to have something. Thank you very much, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, this is what I was talking. Actually, I'm, I'm very proud to say that the Prof. Abdullah Shab is, is uh, one of our team in the cardiac center in Alain to work together. And uh, we, we're practicing, we're giving only Virapamir, we're not giving light to Vicerin anymore. So this this would confirm what we were talking about. Okay. Shall we continue? Shall we open? We forget the important part of the cath lab, which is what we call ourselves. Shukran, the cath lab. <laughs> so guys, you remember, uh, I'm the guy who loves that guiding catheter lecture. So, okay. I'm showing a good practice. He is giving the catheter, and this is something to keep in mind, guys. Whenever you're handing over the catheter, give the end part to the scrub nurse. I've seen people open it reverse, and then it get tangled, and then it get kinked. So this is a very good practice. 
Okay? Better practice even, not to pull the catheter completely. What Anjit just did, he, this is the safest way to open the catheter, not damaging the tip, not damaging the end for it. Okay. I, we face some issues sometimes, Jaha, with the ABU catheters. <laughs> their, 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 their curve, actually, when you take it out without the, 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 the papers, uh, yeah, Cartoon. it's actually um, sometimes bended, you know, so you just see a bend when you take it uh, during emergency cases, so it's better actually to take it with the paper one and then uh, you can uh, okay. remove it. And the rule in cath lab, anything with a lumen, you flush it. You flush it and you dip it with the water, so it's going to be wet from in and out. Always wires, catheters. Uh, this is basic. Okay. And uh, usually the catheter, uh, the cassette comes with a uh, Teflon wire. And fun fact: Why do we, audience? Why do we call it a Teflon wire? I would like to see the answer there. Now, can we prepare the stents, yeah, Amjad? So, always remember your labels, always remember your equipment. Let's see what's the difference. So, we saw Amjad just now preparing the, the balloon. He done the negative, he flushed the tip, and he prepared it. What are we going to do with the stent now? Let's see. Okay. Okay, I can put it. Okay. okay. Put the camera on, put like it. No, no. No. Okay, are you going to see France? So, the difference between the preparation between the balloon and the stent, so we did already the, I mean, preparation and uh, uh, flushing the balloons, but for the stent, we did not, we shouldn't do anything. No negative, no aspiration, and no flushing. This is our practice. What about you, Mr. Sari? So, uh, actually, it depends. Some of our physicians, they do really like to just flush the inner port by the needle. Okay. Yeah. So, they are so delicate and meticulous about this one. Some of them just go in and uh, just we, we advance the stunt itself. Yeah. But uh, as you said, there's no negative definitely for this one. So, no negative, of course. Okay. Did you flush the mm. Did you flush the stunt? The tip, they did not flush it. They just asked about the preferences of the... Uh, the uh, never, uh, don't touch the sun, don't flush the sun. Like, the negative. When do we do negative? Actually, we do negative. But when the consultant will do the negative, when he's at the digit, he will just give it one negative just to lose the understanding. Mm -hmm. So that's his job. We don't do it as scrub nurse. Like, one important thing that we also need to discuss while you're in the scrubbing, uh, preparing uh, and you have an IV cannula and everything. Uh, what's your preference here in the cannula for you? What do you do in usual practice? Do you start IV fluid? Do you do anything specific or? Actually, we prefer to put the uh, cannula in the left arm, of course, mm -hmm. and we start fluid just for keep vein open if the blood pressure okay, and if uh, hypertension, of course. But for the sum of patient hypertension, no need for fluid, but to be sure that the cannula is open, beta. It's the very important thing to be sure the cannula working. Very good. The thing is, uh, KVO is always a good idea. And KVO is like 10, 15 ml per hour. Keeping a long line with the three-way tap in the middle, actually is a good idea. Sometimes, okay, uh, number one, when the physician is scrubbing and we're doing a procedure, you need to give medication. The physician need to stop screening, giving x-ray. This is not safe. So, so they have to stop screening. You have to give the medication. Come back, then they will continue. I always recommend that when you're putting like a cannula, you have uh, an extension, a three-way tap at the end. Keep it a bit far so you could have an easier access to it. That would be a safe practice. KVO for you guys. Uh, uh, yeah, then. it's better actually at least to have an IV standby. So if you're gonna actually use it, okay, it's ready to be used. If you don't, mm -hmm. not gonna use it. So at least you have it uh, for any emergency situations. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Jeff said, it depends usually on what's the patient's condition and the scenarios. But you have to have one with the three-way ready. Okay. So I think uh, thank you, Mr. Jah. I think it's important uh, point to stop the X-ray 
during the medication or anything with the patient because it's very very near to the x-ray for the staff if the x-ray is ongoing this is you know, very important very okay. good we didn't talk about draping the, uh, the rest of the screen what, what's left on the table did we cover the yeah. so let's bring the eye closer to the patient hmm? but the Mr. Abdullah, our patient, Mr. Abdullah, how are you? Still, <laughs> still doing well. It's okay. Mohammed, I have a question here. For the intervention oh. procedure, a long procedure, uh, I don't know if they prefer to give some sedation for the patient, uh, ketamine, midazolam. Let's talk about the sedation, what to be given usually, what's the preferences to be for the sedation part? Uh, I think... Uh, Jad already said for him, them they use yes. fentanyl, midazolam. Yes, in our hospital we give just fentanyl and midazolam, but it's, yani, I mean, yani, very, very low doses. And by the staff uh, procedure, sedation uh, certified. Mm -hmm. Also, the staff nurse should be have uh, or has already uh, certification for the procedure sedation. Yeah. Now this is because of GCI. Also, a lot of Sabahi. Yes, yes. They're requesting that oh, anyone who will give fentanyl or midazolam need to be have uh, drug uh, sedation certification or anything like that. Any question from the audience, Maher? Uh, you're on mute. Um, so uh, um, the operator should have a privilege to give the sedation. But actually, let's say 90, 99 percent of our patients we give midazolam and we give fentanyl. It's good patients to relax during the procedure. Yeah. The heart attack will go down. But people will be stressed. You know, they got the procedure. You are inside the heart. Not many people knows that it's a simple procedure. But most of the people when we are going for amalia or surgery, so they will be stressed. Heart rate will be high. So it's better to make them down and they relax. Especially for the long procedure, uh, Maher. Yeah. Okay. Any question from the audience, and the guys, or uh... actually, actually, the questions there was some some questions from the audience, but it, we almost covered during our discussions. It's about the contrast, the dilution of the contrast, and the saline. So it's, it's we're fine. Okay, that's very good. So now we prepared our stands. We prepared our uh, guiding. We talked about the. Um, preparation of the table and thing. One more thing we need to think, we need to show the audience. So, uh, what do you think, Antarctic Bloom Pump? Antarctic Bloom Pump. Okay. Um, be good. A lot of centers don't have experience for the Antarctic Bloom Pump. So I think we're going to go there. I think we'll get you an assistant, I decide that. But I, won't not, I will not let him scrub. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, 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 no. So, sorry, okay. gloves. <laughs> so I put my gloves. So we're going to talk about antiaortic balloon pumps now. What uh, guys in the audience? What's antiaortic balloon pump used for? Can we wake you up? Usually I can see the chat, but here I cannot. <laughs> It's going to be done. So this is an demo, antarctic balloon pump. It's an, uh, I think, an eight French catheter. It consists of, and all of the balloon pump usually consists of two packs, the balloons and the sheath and the introduction. And there's uh, some fancy ones would have this uh, little gizmo, which is a stabilizing device for switching and stitching. So, uh, okay. Sorry, how often do you guys do IRBB? Whenever the patient needed. <laughs> well, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> so, it depends on the patient's condition. There's an academic shock during the procedure. Or if you have a complex case, let's say multiple disease disease, including the left man, so they prefer to have a backup to have the balloon pump, which is, which is much better. This is why, even we're doing grade here, we try to keep the fibula ready 
لا سمح الله الله يكفي ان شاء الله انه يو مايت نيد تو جو فور ا بيس ميكر اور انتوبيوتيك بلوم بلوم ذس از ذا مين ريزن واي وود وي وود هاف ذس سو اكشلي محمد يو نو سم سنتر يوزنج فور ذا هاي ريسك بروسيجر لايك از مستر ماهر منشن امبيلا فور اكزامبل سو اي دونت نو اف ذي ار يوزنج ذس ديفايس Okay, so Jaya, the floor is yours. Okay, we uh, okay. let's open first uh, the balloon set. We have two set of the balloon pump. We have the one set with the balloon itself, and the other set for the catheter insertion. Okay, I know I'm just wearing the Stirag gloves just to show the preparation only, but uh, ideally, definitely, the scrub nurse should have their uh, own. Uh, Scrubbing a sterile gun. So here we have the helium gas catheter. We have two extension lines. We have the three way, and we have the hip lock for the three way, just to actually to close the after uh, setting up the line. Uh, we have the puncture needle, and we have a dilator, two dilators. One will gonna go actually with the sheet. The other one will gonna go for just to dilate the uh, the, the the skin. Uh, and the artery itself. So if you have a sheet already, so it's going to be easy for you to ex uh, exchange with the dilator one. After flushing the dilator port, so we're going to go with the... Uh, hang on, let's see. Okay. Okay, so we're flushing dilator with the sheet. That's one shot. Okay, click. So it's ready now. We have our wire, so it depends usually, but this wire is a two-five wire, okay? So always, I I always tell the cath lab staff that to have a backup wire in case your wire drop or anything wrong with the wire happen, so you have to have one uh, as a standby. So this is the sheet and this is the wire. So we can take the other set now, please. Just remove this one. Okay. Good. So this is a fiber optic one. Uh, I know some of the centers they don't have the fiber optic. Sometimes they just use the regular one, which is with the old technique. Uh, we have the syringe here with the plastic connector. So we need to connect to the male to the female. Okay. And we have the flushing port for the balloon itself. Okay. So we just make sure that we're gonna flush the port. Some of the balloon, they come with a stylet in, so we need just to take the stylet and prime the uh, balloon. So, okay, we can see the fluids are coming from this side. The negative, so this is, we have around 30 mil, so we do a negative one, one, and we can do another one also as well. And then you disconnect the syringe. Keep this connector while before you remove it, before you insert the uh, the catheter with the helium gas. Okay. So now we have our balloon ready. Make sure that the scrub nurse, or sorry, the circulating nurse, or the perfusionist, or whoever technician is going to connect, is ready with the transducer. So that's one. Uh, if you are using non-fiber optic. With the fiber optic, so the transistor is uh, not needed since the uh, the machine will take care of this one. So if we go with the wire now. So let's say this is the sheath is in already. Okay. So my colleague is already having the wire in. You get the balloon pump and you insert it now. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna be difficult to take it out after this, but let's go in. So I have the helium gas, I have the extension lines. Why helium? This is a good question. Can somebody answer why we have helium? 
So while we're actually waiting for the answer from the audience or from the panelists, so we can actually connect. So we have male to the female. And this extension extender line or the helium gas uh, catheter will go to the uh, circulator, whoever circulating. This is will go to the machine with the circulator as well, the fiber, uh, fiber optic line. Fiber optic has been relaxing to a lot of centers. Less connection, less preparation. Uh, guys, uh, panel, uh, who's in charge of the antibiotic balloon pump in your hospital? Actually, in our uh, hospital, the perfusionist uh, is responsible for the balloon pump. Mm. So they come to the cath lab? Yes. Do, uh, for, for any emergency case, uh, one of the team uh, from perfusionists will be with us most of the time. Uh, okay. But uh, our technician also, they are trained uh, to deal with the machine. When the, when the patient is back to the ICU, who is taking care of it? The perfusionist. Okay. Yes. Allah, they must be very happy. Maher. <laughs> yeah, for us, actually, the nurses, we train all the nurses to... Uh, I never actually experienced the perfusionist, perfusionist to be in the cath lab. Um, but it's a, it's it's an excellent option to have them in the cath lab to take care of the antibiotic balloon pump because this is their specialty. But oh dear. The nurses and the technician to take care of the balloon pump, especially with the new one, it's fully automated one. You see, it's worth okay. it. Audience, what about you guys? Uh, anyone doing it differently? Let us know. Sure, Sari, what about you guys? Uh, the nurses actually are taking care for the insertion and uh, connections as well. Okay. In the cath lab? Yes. In the right. Once in the ICU? I see you, the ICU nurses will take care of that one. Okay. With, with their intensivists and the mm -hmm. cardiologists, whoever is covering the ICU. Back in the old days when I was in Prince Sultan, the RTs used to be the one doing the interotic balloon pump. The RT? Yeah, believe it or not. Yeah. But uh, I, I heard they changed it, I'm not sure. But what, so, is uh, <laughs> what is the connection, Jaha? What is the connection of the RT with the balloon pump? Exactly. <laughs> That's my question. I don't want to. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to give the other extension line for the uh, circulator or perfusionist, whatever it is, and he's going to flash towards me. And then uh, after flashing, I'm going to stay here. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we can uh, use the other extension actually to extend our uh, catheter if we think it's actually short a little bit. And then I will uh, continue. So you can ask the circulator to flush towards you. After flushing, we use the syringe to aspirate. Make sure there is no air bubbles in the catheter itself. So we aspirate, we close, please flush, flush towards me. Okay, there is no air bubbles. Flush, continue flushing. And then uh, our balloon setup is already in. Uh, definitely. Uh, when you want to set up the balloon and to make sure the indicator for the balloon uh, pump uh, under the X-ray, so which are the landmarks to make sure that uh, our balloon pump tip is in uh, in the right place? So what's the, the landmark usually? To the audience, question? Yes. Hello, audience. I miss uh, seeing your messages. Give it to Maher and Faisal. What's the landmark for a proper balloon, uh, intraortic balloon placement? Oh, sorry, what's your heparin? What are you doing uh, since today? I'm not going to give them the heparin uh, question. Mm. Let's talk about the heparin until they give us the answer. I'm waiting for a, a couple of people who are always yeah, they're sure. always uh, joining in and uh, exactly <laughs> participating in the, yeah, just, in the webinars. Uh, usually, we give bolus of heparin okay. if there's no uh, bolus given to the patient, followed by heparin infusion as well. Okay, exactly. as long as the balloon pump is available. Then. Okay, so heparin infusion, and this is very important to remember. Uh, I don't know what's the is your medication concentration or the dilution in the cath lab differs from ICU and CCU in your hospital, or is it the same? Uh, the heparin infusion is a standard in whole hospital, so they have one standard which is one five thousand units and five hundred units of normal saline. Okay, okay. Uh, since, since I asked the question, what about dopamine? Uh, is it differ? Uh, uh, dopamine uh, four hundred, and okay. they have. Uh, Higher concentration, 800 and the ICU. So, because in the, I remember in the old days, uh, even though I'm sure I remember, we used to have the dopamine, the vitamin chart. I think you have it here also. We so, uh, actually, now it's coming as a premix. Okay. So it's already prepared. 
Okay. You don't have to prepare what the farmer says. But... Anyone answer the question about the landmark, guys, in the audience or no? No, I, I don't receive anything. But, no. hmm? Sorry? My job about the landmark. In, uh, I mean? No answer at all? No. What about the helium gas? <laughs> I think no perfusionist with us, so maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Take it, sorry. Okay. So, uh, so for, uh, yes, helium, I think it's uh, low density, so faster to go, faster to back up, and faster to diffusion. To to dissolve in the blood, exactly. And if la samahalla rupture, the helium is more uh, better than CO. We know we can use CO two for this issue, but the helium more safer with the helium, well, with the blood. Exactly. We think absorbed by the blood, right? So we absorbed, yes. Okay, yes. agree. So what about the landmark, Hello. Let's talk about the landmarks. Landmark, uh, so I, I guess the landmark, uh, I think the audience will agree with me, is going to be the carina. The tip of your catheter, of the balloon catheter, will be at the carina level, exactly. And then you have to make sure that you have fixed your balloon and the cine is done upon fixing the catheter, so you make sure there's nothing has been uh, displaced or moving before you transfer the patient to uh, the ICU unit. Like when you're picking a balloon from your stock, how do you know it's suiting for this patient? Good question from Jaha about the length or length. the size of the balloon. Yes. So uh, we can show them actually the chart available yeah, on the idea. balloon pump itself. I think this is the only one that you have in this one. Yeah, so this is actually the one we open it, it's 50 cc balloon. So it depends on the length of the patient, so you can decide to choose which balloon you're going to be used. Yeah. Uh, definitely the shorter is safer because actually uh, you don't occlude the subclavian artery and the renal artery. So we need to uh, check the size. So we have uh, the smallest one, I've seen it actually in the market was 25. Okay. Then we go with the 30, then the 40, then the 50. Yeah, but to, uh, by experience, uh, guys, I want to hear debate something. Have you ever faced that you picked according to the companies or whatever size, but it actually ended up being still taller uh, than the proper sizing? And for us, we ended up using like a the 34, uh, 34 is when it was done, I mean. Yes, the 40, sorry, 34, we have 34, 40, 40 and... Uh, yeah, it recommended for 40, but we end up using the 34 because our experience, even if we go, it didn't end up proper size. I don't know. I'm just asking the audience. So far, whenever you follow the length of the patient with the comparing with the balloon size, we have no issue. And you have always to compare the urine output to check it and to check the pulses, distal pulses for the patients whenever you insert the balloon. And this one of the continuous observation post procedures. Uh, you have to check the the level of uh, sorry level of consciousness uh, yeah. of the patients. Uh, doesn't have any stroke, and you know this is one of the risk the vascular access complications. All this has to be taken in consideration, especially when you are uh, dealing with a patient having a balloon pump. Third, what else do we have? We have, we have some answers. Let's share it. Uh, so, Aris, uh, 36 centimeters is uh, more than 150 centimeters below. Uh, Mervat, for intraortic balloon pump, two centimeters below the aortic uh, knob. Mm -hmm. um, People are answering. Yeah. The appropriate performance of the intraortic balloon pump is dependent on the proper positioning. Uh, the tip of the balloon should be positioned two to three centimeters distal to the origin of the left. I, I don't have the full message. <laughs> left, left what? Left side clear, you mean? Left side clear, I think, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the issue you can't see the artery on the floor, so you can see the carina on the floor. Anatomically, yes, they are right, two to three centimeters below the subclavian artery, which is right. But uh, uh, under fluoroscopy, you have to have uh, a very good. Uh, Do you advise in the emergency to go with 34, the smallest size, rather than to think, choose, and. Uh, I think you said that's a good question. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, you have to take the risk which for which uh, is going to be uh, more dangerous to use. Do you use the longer one or the smaller one? The smaller one, uh, you're not going to occlude the arena artery, you're not going to occlude the, face, the, the sub subclavian artery. If you take shorter one, uh, maybe the performance is going to be a little bit a little bit less. But if you take the longer one, you're going to have risk of uh, no urine output and the dissection, um, uh, 
uh, occlusion of the uh, left left subcaven artery. Sorry. So yes, shorter better than longer. Okay. Very good. Now, so we've talked about our PCI. Yes. We talked about the enterotic balloon pump. We talked about the preparation of the table. Any comment? Any extra comments about that? The for closure device, we're usually using transdigital equipment, uh, closure device like uh, the ready band, inflation, inflatable band, or whatever brand. Yes, we have the TR band and another company, of course. We have uh, just the pressure, any band. But sometimes, maybe in some uh, cath labs, we they use the just the pressure without uh, that. Uh, goes, like a um, tourniquet. Yeah, yes, uh, put the tourniquet. Yes, yes as, as a tourniquet. Just be sure there is a pulse or the saturation is good in the big fingers. Mm. As you, yes. Okay. You want to talk about a bit about the medication in the cath lab? And let's cover that subject. For so, Mr. Jihad, if you can just get a look on the uh, medication that you use it in your cath lab, how do you set up the high alert drugs? Yes. Okay. So, of course, every cath lab uh, should have a cabinet for uh, medication, maybe floor stock medication or uh, narcotic. So, our cath lab designed this, our uh, medication cabinet. So, there is a key, of course. And Mr. Sari Fadal. So, so uh, if you talk about narcotics, you have, so your narcotics is here as far as you know, right? Yes. So all the yes. narcotics should be uh, separate, yes, separate key, so double key, double, double cover as so well. Yes, yeah, yes. so it's going to be double cover, so this is one, this is the second one. As you can see, we have uh, uh, labels with, with the red, with a red sign, and it's written clearly high alert medication. It depends on your hospital and your preferences, which one is the high alert drugs. So you have to uh, uh, mark it, first of all, and you have, uh, we have also another issue with the high alert drugs, or even the look-alikes and the like drugs. So if you hear about two drugs the same, look the sound, for example, let's say ephedrine and epinephrine. So it has to be separated, dopamine, dobutamine. You know, we have something called Tolman lettering, so you separate between letters as well. So uh, this is, has to be taken in consideration. You separate them on the shelves, okay? So you, you, you try to make sure they are not mixing all together. Otherwise, you might have risk of uh, medication error. So we have high alert, for example, like a dopamine. We have levofed here, or norepinephrine. We have the heparin, for example, here as well. Uh, we have the amiodarone. Uh, we have the dopamine. We have epinephrine. Uh, we have dexo 50%. So all actually clear tyrafiban, and I think most of the cath labs are using tyrafiban in their units, uh, and some other uh, hospitals they use like abseximab or integralin. So it depends on uh, what's available in their hospital. Uh, the lidocaine as well. So uh, it's clearly written. You can see it labeled properly with the high alert one. The heparin that we have, for example, here. Uh, it's written heparin. We have 1,000 ml. Uh, sorry, 1,000 units per one ml. And this is a total of five mils. So each ampule has five mils, okay? With a clear expiry date, so it's very written. Uh, I just need to remind again and again, and we discussed it earlier before, the high alert medication should have uh, something called independent double check. So this one uh, has to be maintained properly. You don't give blindly the medication. Even in narcotics, it has to be checked properly by IDC. So independent double check, one nurse will check, and the other one will, will check. When, once they confirm it, this is the right medication, you can give it to the patient. The reason for the independent of check, because those medications, when you give it wrongly, it will harm the patient. So we have to be very careful about these uh, uh, steps. Uh, Besides the lookalikes and the like drugs that we need to separate it. Uh, I guess even the sedation part, so uh, we didn't talk about the documentation part or the observation part, but definitely when we give sedation to the patient, we have to continue observing the patient every five minutes by the signs, uh, respiratory rates, saturations, if you have uh, ethnography also for the patient. So all this has to be taken in consideration when we talk about uh, sedation uh, given to the patient throughout the procedures uh, till you finish and you transfer your patient to another unit. Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. Yes, that's, a wrap. that's a wrap. Yes. Yes. Thank questions you. from the audience. Uh, Maher Faisal. We're trying to find some questions for you guys, but I'm not receiving actually.
not deserving energy because we're going to wrap it. Anything from your side? Right. Can we have your final thoughts, Maher and Faisal? Uh, thank you guys, Tamar. We covered uh, the most important parts in the cath lab, which is preparing the patients, scrapping, and taking care of, of many things, which is very crucial and critical in, in the cath lab. Uh, well done. It was a very nice demonstration. From my side, I have no questions. Before we close, I think uh, Faisal will give some comments also. Uh, thank you, Mr. Maher. And I just, uh, <laughs> Mr. Mohammed, how is the patient? Thank you, thank you, really. It's a good information. Uh, actually, I cannot see if there's any question from the audience. Uh, and I have an issue with the chat rooms, I cannot see the question, so maybe Mr. Mahat can help. No, yeah, but it's coming to me, but we cannot, I cannot see it, but I'll try yeah. to maybe that. Ziad. But there is, there is one, well, um, and let's say uh, for the radial, for the radial uh, band, uh, guys, from your experience, how long you keep it uh, post diagnostic and post intervention? And do you have any uh, recommendation or advices for the uh, keeping the radial band, the TR band, I mean? So, uh, for how long so, keep you had the radial band, if it's diagnostic or intervention? Post procedure, yeah. Post procedure, yes. yes. Uh, actually, it depends yeah. on uh, yeah. the the procedure. So for diagnostic, actually, the patient receive a very small amount of heparin, so we maybe put it just for uh, two hours as a maximum okay. and less. Uh, but in our hospital, there is a standard you know, for two hours okay. for diagnostic. And for BCI, after BCI, actually for three hours. And we start to deflate the air or the pressure gradually. Okay, so this is our policy. I agree with you, Mr. Jihad. Also, in our uh, practice, so diagnostic one we keep it like around two hours. Uh, intervention one, three maximum four hours, not more than this one. Again. I mean, uh, Mr. Jihad was saying, did you hear what Mr. Jihad said? He said for the diagnostic one, two hours, they keep the TR band, they deflate gradually. And for the intervention, PCI, for example, three hours, and they uh, also deflate gradually. I agree with him, same practice in our hospital as well. Two for diagnostic, three to four for the intervention one, not more than this. Okay, great. Anything else, Faisal? Jihad? Oh, no. Sorry, my head. Yeah, we're fine. Faisal? I can see your mouth moving. Faisal, he's mute. Huh? Faisal, you're mute. Anything? Yes, I have a question here. A uh, question is which is best of VDS or aortic balloon bomb or umbilla and other? What is this? Again, the questions about that or the bone pump and the actual question again. It's not clear. Uh, I think we are yeah. asking uh, what is the uh, what you what are you advising to use the intraortic balloon pump or the impella or other devices maybe mm -hmm. as a ventricular assist device. Just <laughs> Our experience with Impella is very limited, honestly speaking, but definitely uh, it's very helpful. You have Impella in your cath lab, which is more advanced than using a balloon pump. It will be more helpful actually for the patient's condition, especially, especially if I talk about left, left main stenting. Yes. Uh, yeah, and three vessel PCI, for example, multi vessel PCI uh, with poor hemodynamic uh, outcome from the patient. Uh, I agree, yes. If you have Impella, go ahead and use it for such cases. Otherwise, if you have balloon pump, uh, it should be uh, at least helpful for your condition of the patient. Uh, so we have to use whatever support you have for your patient in, in the cath lab. Actually, maybe you know, the cath lab uh, you know, may be easy to have an intraortic balloon machine than the Impella. So that you know, the Impella is limited in some of uh, Actually, I, I, I believe the umbrella will be available in all the cath labs. Some people are working very hard on it now. 
uh, and they have 3.5, uh, which is good in the cat lab during yeah. the complex cases. It will be it will be very effective, right. but also again, if we talk about the cost effective things, it is very expensive. Uh, yes, that's uh, yeah. yeah. But, but it is it is very effective. I think there's comparison between the antibiotic colon pump and the Imperla, which is in favor of Imperla. Uh, but again, um, intraortic colon pump is good. We've been using it for the last uh, many years and it is effective for the patients or it's helping the patients. But it's good to have also the latest and the new technology for our patients if we can do that. Agreed. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Thank you for some jihad. Yes, no comments you. from you. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, this event, uh, Metronic. And actually, I mean, more uh, sharing, more sorry. experience, more sharing, less uh, mistakes. So uh, thank you very good. And inshallah, we will see you uh, later, inshallah. Sorry. Uh, thank you for the JS and the Metronic. Actually, it was uh, for me a great pleasure to be here. And this is the first time we do live demonstration in such scenarios. So, the first, it's really the first time. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, maybe if we uh, go more advanced and we think about more issues, so we go further and further about different practice, different uh, technique, different uh, equipment. Uh, I think if we just build up with this one for the f future plan, uh, we can have more... Uh, yeah, uh, we have many things for sure. Uh, yeah, there's many things we can do. Thank you very much, guys. So, uh, thank you very much. Um, I hope we covered as much as we can. This is actually a first trial for something new. And GIS has always been innovative and they gave the Medtronic and gave the nurses technician and for the cath lab a good home. So you can see what GIS is doing. It's out of the box. Yes. And Alhamdulillah, it's a team effort for everyone. Uh, thank, uh, inshallah, soon there will be more surprises from GIS and Neutronic. Mm -hmm. Wait for it. But inshallah, this COVID passes and we get to see each other face to face. Maher, I, <laughs> Fizzle, I, haven't, <laughs> see, I haven't seen Maher Fizzle for almost a year now, which is unusual for me. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please uh, ask, uh, send it uh, to uh, ICOM or the GIS. We'll try to answer it uh, directly to you guys. And uh, we send Metron further together. And yeah, thank you, Alfavia. Thank you, Icon. And thank you for the team who uh, everyone here in the Canada. Thank you, SMC, for giving us a, a home today to do and to show something new. Yeah, thank you, Alfavia, and goodbye. Thank you. Uh, we're done. Uh, thank you so much. It was a great idea. Uh, this is you. It's nothing new. Jihad uh, Ansari, <laughs> well done, guys. Thank you so much. For the, the nice presentation, and uh, I hope many people they, they already learned from this one. Uh, thank you, 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 thank you,